we're here to talk with rheumatologist Dr. Hassan Beydoun about rheumatic diseases. So hi, Dr. Beydoun. Hello. Welcome to In Good Health. Well, thank you for having me here. So you're a rheumatologist. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what a rheumatologist does? Yeah, so um, not a lot of people or many people have heard of rheumatology or mm -hmm. rheumatologists. Uh, it's a subspecialty um, from internal medicine, and our focus is mostly on joint diseases. Okay. So we think of things that involve the joints and even the connective tissues, the things that bind the joints together, is, is what our specialty focuses on. Okay. A lot of those and things. What kind of diseases fall within joint disease? So, that we would be familiar with. Yeah, so some of the things that people are familiar with are things like wear and tear arthritis, like osteoarthritis. Okay. But that tends to have a lot of overlap between the rheumatologist, the orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine, even your primary doctor, your family doctor, uh, takes care of wear and tear arthritis. Uh, so there's a lot of overlap with the wear and tear. Um, our primary kind of field that is mostly taken care of by us and not really any of the other specialties is the inflammatory arthritis. Okay. Uh, and those include diseases, some things that are more common like gout. Ah. Sometimes your primary doctor does take care of gout, but we are specialized to take care of gout. We uh, do a lot of time and research and training in just that one field alone, so we're very highly specialized in just treating things like gout, which are more common. And then less common things, maybe things like arthritis related to psoriasis, uh, related to psoriasis, so something called psoriatic arthritis. Um, something that's more common is rheumatoid arthritis. People have heard about rheumatoid arthritis. Yes. That's where basically the immune system is attacking the joints, causing inflammation. Okay. That's an inflammatory arthritis. Um, and then there are some other diseases that as a byproduct of their inflammation cause joint diseases but really are affecting the entire body, something like lupus. Okay. Okay, so um, would you say at the base of this a, a rheumatologic problem, is it inflammation? Yeah, so there's, I guess you could say for rheumatism or rheumatology as far as the study of joints and connective tissue diseases, um, the two broad categories could break things down to is wear and tear okay. type of processes and inflammatory type processes. Uh, we take care of kind of all the, all the above, but uh, when a doctor typically thinks to send their patients over to a rheumatologist, it's typically for the inflammatory type. And sometimes you do get the wear and tear. Somebody has you know wear and tear like osteoarthritis of the knee. We may you know inject the knee, drain the fluid, things like that. But okay. when it comes down to the inflammatory side, like if a doctor thinks or your primary or family doctor thinks of you know, possible rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm which is an inflammatory condition, your immune system is causing inflammation in those joints, then definitely they, they send to the rheumatologist because that requires treatments that are kind of specialized only to us. Do you coordinate care with other physicians like a sports medicine doctor or orthopedic doctor um, mm -hmm. when you're caring for a patient depending on the issue? When it gets to the point where the sports medicine doctor or the orthopedist believes that there may be an inflammatory disease going on okay. or a need to be treated with an immunosuppressant, a medication that quiets the immune system down so it decreases the inflammation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's when they typically send it to us. Um, but that's not the only fields that we typically work with. Okay. Uh, again, something that's more common is psoriasis. Mm -hmm. So some patients with psoriasis may go on to develop an, arth uh, an arthritis related to psoriasis called psoriatic arthritis. So us and the dermatologists work closely together with those patients. Um, there's a lot of eye conditions, inflammatory mm -hmm. eye lesions. There's just different things called scleritis, episcleritis, uveitis. Uh, those are just different types of inflammation that are found in the eye. And we, from time to time, do receive patients from the eye doctors, from the ophthalmologists, to evaluate and treat patients with these type of inf inflammatory eye diseases 
that they believe is caused by one of our diseases. Okay, so a patient wouldn't necessarily ever come to you directly. It would be from a ref uh, as a re result of a referral from another doctor. The majority true? of them do because just a specialty or the nature of our specialty that patients don't really know what rheumatologist is, what mm -hmm. we deal with. So it's really hard for a patient to kind of surmise kind of the... the In the day and age of uh, uh, WebMD and internet, we want to make sure that people yeah. follow the right uh, route and check with your primary doctor first. Yeah, definitely. I definitely suggest checking the primary doctor. Uh, and like I said, sometimes it's, you might be referred from a specialist. Again, mm -hmm. I you talked about the skin doctors, the dermatologists. I talked about the eye doctors, sometimes orthopedists or sports medicine. But there's also referrals from your GI doctor. There's something called uh, inflammatory bowel disease related. Okay. Uh, arthritis, which huh. can be found in patients with Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. So these common type of GI type inflammatory issues that are very common in society may sometimes have joint pain or arthritis related to them. So sometimes those could be an inflammatory arthritis and your GI doctor may send you over, your pulmonologist, and they may find that you have some lesions or some sort of inflammatory type process going on in your lungs that they think may be related to rheumatology. Mm -hmm. So your pulmonologist may send you over. So in short, because a rheumatological, most rheumatological diseases tend to be autoimmune in nature, okay. or a good majority, a good bulk of them mm -hmm. tend to have an autoimmune component. Um, they tend to have multiple systems involved. That's why we work with not just your primary doctor, but specialists as well. So definitely should see your primary doctor or a specialist mm -hmm. uh, coming to a rheumatologist without having somebody else evaluate or you. evaluation. For, yeah. You may come in the clinic and it may be something completely unrelated to what I deal with. So as far as autoimmune diseases go, um, can you give us a, I know we hear that term a lot, but can you give us some more information about what an autoimmune disease actually is? Yeah, so autoimmune diseases are basically when your immune system is attacking its own self. Wow. So your immune system is naturally designed to attack foreign invaders and they have a bunch of circuitry in the immune system to check everybody's passport. <laughs> it checks your body's passport, and checks everybody else's passport. Mm -hmm. And if you're not carrying the right passport, the immune system is gonna go after you. In autoimmune diseases, there's a breakdown in that tolerance, that self-tolerance. So it no longer recognizes your own body tissues as having the correct passport, and it initiates the military to attack, <laughs> if you wanna put it in those terms. Mm -hmm. That makes uh, good sense. Not all autoimmune diseases are rheumatologic. So what kind of treatments uh, do you employ? So depending on what the, what the disease is, what the diagnosis is, would we'll decide or would we'll dictate what kind of treatment that we use. So somebody who has wear and tear arthritis, like osteoarthritis, may be simple as some aspirin, no, not aspirin, more like Aleve, mm -hmm. Motrin, uh, something called Volterran gel, kind of those aspirin type things that you apply to your skin, uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, and in some cases we also do steroid injections where we'll you know, inject, you know, usually it's the large joints like your knees or shoulders, mm -hmm. sometimes you inject some of the smaller joints in your hands, sometimes you might get an inflammation of some of the tendons, or the bursa, kind of this outer hip area. A lot of patients typically have like, I have hip pain when they point, they're pointing kind of this area and say, okay, that's a bursitis. Uh, sometimes you just inject those things. So those are for the wear and tear things. Now for the inflammatory things, things like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, um, we typically have to use an immunosuppressant medication. Uh, okay. Those things can range, range from medications you take by mouth, like methotrexate, um, and in certain cases for a patient with more severe rheumatoid arthritis, we may have to use medications like Humira, Enbril, okay. things that you've seen on, on commercials. The advertisements. Advertisements. Mm -hmm. uh, some patients have also seen advertisements for things like Cosyntex, which is uh, for patients who have psoriasis that, that also have arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, or a cousin to psoriatic arthritis called ankylosing spondylitis. 
So these are medications that we use. Okay. And do you find that your patients um, are under care for a lifetime once some of these issues are discovered, or um, are they curable in some cases? I know there's a wide range. I heard there are about 200 different diseases that you um, that fall under your category. Yeah. But in general, is it um, something that is manageable and that you can recover from, or usually pretty long term? Yeah, the majority of rheumatological diseases tend to be lifelong. Okay. So it's, it's uh, in a rarity you may have an acute case, but a majority of our diseases, and like you said, we have over 212 different type of arthritis you deal with or causes of arthritis. Mm -hmm. um, and the majority of the ones we deal with are, are lifelong type things. So something like rheumatoid arthritis, for example, you know, unfortunately, it's something you're going to have to deal with lifelong, and mm -hmm. it's something that we have to coordinate between myself and the patient uh, to control. Um, the lupus is the same way, psoriatic arthritis is the same way, even gout. So going untreated is, uh, you know, could set up even more problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so before, before the advent of these biologic agents, Humira, Enbrel, mm -hmm. uh, Cosyntax, all these new targeted therapies to your immune system. Um, even before some of the oral medications like methotrexate, soft salazine, plaquenil, uh, you know, rheumatologists really only had one kind of tool in their, their, or maybe a couple of tools in their arsenal, which is steroids and uh, high doses of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories like aspirin, Motrin, okay. naproxen. Um, and at that time, so when the doctors who trained me were were practicing back in the 70s and 60s and even up to the 80s, uh, you'd see patients with rheumatoid arthritis, for instance, would have very severe deformities. I mean, you'd see mm. just kind of a normal hand like mine, but if you've seen someone with rheumatoid arthritis, they would be completely deformed. Okay. They'd be unable to make a fist, close their hands, bun a shirt, even feed themselves because they're not able to use their hands at all. Wow. And nowadays with the advent of these medications, we're able to prevent that deterioration of your joints so that you're still able to use your joints just like you normally would. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if uh, I brought you a patient from the 70s who had rheumatoid arthritis and put them in this room right now, and I showed you kind of the, the deterioration, the, the destruction of their joints mm -hmm. versus a patient from, from more modern times, you see the complete difference in and the destructive nature that the disease can potentially have on a patient who wasn't treated or we didn't have the treatments from that time versus what we're able to do now. And is any of that reversible once it's discovered? No. Okay. No. So, so once the destruction has, once we've gotten to the point where destruction has set in, mm -hmm. you can't reverse that. Okay. You've just broken down the architecture and science is not at a point to reverse the, those things. Mm -hmm. So our goal is to prevent that destruction. So is there a certain um, demographic or characteristic of a person that might find themselves in your office? Yeah, so again, that really depends. Every disease has its own little quirks <laughs> and demographics. So. Yes, interesting. And I guess um, a really big lesson here is to listen to your body mm -hmm. and not to chalk up those aches and pains as age or an old injury, but to actually get them checked out. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Thanks for sharing so much really great yeah. uh, information. Excellent. To learn more, visit mclaren.org slash Macomb Rheumatology.